Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can incorporate SwiftUI views into your UIKit apps. Now that iOS 15 has been released, most developers are comfortable supporting iOS versions that are current minus 2, which means iOS 13. And this is the first version that supports SwiftUI. So if you've brought into the SwiftUI like I have, you'll appreciate how easy it is to build your views. What I'm going to show you today is how you can update an app with an original target of iOS 12 and update it to a target of iOS 13 and replace a UI slider on one of the view controllers to instead use a custom view designed in SwiftUI. Now this will require the use of a hosting view controller. Before I get started, I want to ask that if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of future videos. Comments and likes are always appreciated. And if you care to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. I've created two starter projects for this video. And the first is a sample app called My Books, and it uses UIKit. It's a simple app that lists a number of books that I've read and when you tap on the book, you can edit the name and author, select the genre, and change the rating. The updates are reflected back in the list view, and in particular, note the rating, which is this star icon with the rating number inside. You can also add new books and delete them. I have not, however, added any persistency to this app. It's for demo purposes only, so none of your changes will be saved. What I want to do, though, is to be able to replace this awful ratings UI slider control. And that brings me to the second starter project, which is a Swift UI view. And when you tap on a star, the image is changed so that all of the stars are filled up to and including the tapped one. Tapping on a red X will clear the rating. What I want to do in this video is to take this Swift UI view and replace my slider. Then, here in UIKit app, when I tap on a star to update the rating and update my book, that change is again reflected back in the list view too. Before I show you how to do this though, let's first take a look at the starter project code. The view controller is a typical UIKit app with a table view listing all of the books. There are actions to add a book, and to delete one. In Edit View Controller, you have all of the outlets that correspond to the properties in a single book, which we have here in our model. The genre is an enum with some computed properties that will allow me to present the raw value capitalized, along with a corresponding emoji. There are also two static functions that will give me the array of emoji items to use for the genre picker, and one that will be able to determine the index for a selected item in the array. And there's also a static array called sample books that gets loaded when the app launches. Back in the edit view controller then, the things that we'll need to pay attention to and change are the rating slider IB outlet, the slide changed IB action, and the update book functions so that when we replace the slider, we'll still be able to update the ratings on our book. The Ratings Starter app is a Swift UI app that I built using Xcode 13, but the app itself does not use any iOS 15 features at all. In fact, the view is completely compatible with iOS 13, the first iteration of SwiftUI. The control is a slightly modified version of the one that I created to demonstrate how to create a SwiftUI package, and I'll leave a link to this video in the description below. The package, however, currently only supports SwiftUI, and we want to use the new view in our UIKit app, so it's going to require some modifications. The view currently in this sample project is quite simple, and we've seen how it works, but it's not reusable, even within this SwiftUI project. The view is this entire vStack, 
So I'm going to extract it into its own view. So let me close off this preview for the moment. And I want to create a new Swift UI view that we'll call Readings View. Let me option click on Content View so that I can see both of my views on the screen at the same time. Now our view is going to be this entire content view. So I'm just going to copy the entire view and the preview and paste it in to replace my ratings view. And then make sure I update wherever it says content view to ratings view. And we only need to do one more thing here. When we use this view in SwiftUI, we want to be able to respond to state changes. So we'll need to change the current rating to a binding and remove the default value. The remaining properties are all variables, all with default values. So when I create a ratings view in any one of my views, all I really need to do is to pass in the binding, unless I want to change the number of items, the color, the width, or the SF symbol used for the ratings. So back in content view, we can keep the state variable, but remove the remaining ones here, and replace the V stack in the body with an instance of our ratings view, passing in the current rating, accepting the default values. Now let's go back to our content view and preview again and see that what we can do now. I want to create a second ratings view, but I want to use hearts and I want to have the rating go from one to 10 and be red to match the hearts. So first let me embed my current ratings view in a VStack. And I'm going to add a new one above it. Now when I start to create my ratings view, you'll see that I have two options for my initializer. That second one is the one that's going to allow me to enter values for one or more of the remaining arguments. But remember, if you leave one out, it'll just take on the default value. So the first thing I'm going to need is a binding to a state property, and it's going to be different from the one that we use for our stars. So I'll need to create a new one that I'll call current love, and I'll initialize it initially with a zero as well. And then we can use that for our binding. I want to set the max rating to 10, the color to a UI color of red. I'm going to leave the width at the default so I can remove that argument altogether. But for the fill image name, I want heart.fill. And for the open image, it's just the SF symbol, which is a heart. If I refresh the canvas now, I'll get both ratings on the content view. And both of them are independent of each other so that I can set ratings on one or the other or both as I see fit. Well, this is perfect. I want to use one of these views inside my UI kit app to replace that UI slider. So let's open our UI kit app now using this version of Xcode. And the first thing I want to do is to make sure that it requires iOS 13 as a minimum. So I'll need to go to the target and set the deployment target to a minimum of 13. And we do this both here on the target and on the project as well. The next step is to add the SwiftUI view from our ratings app to this project. And this is as simple as dragging from one project to the other. Now it's time to change our UI layout so we can use that new SwiftUI view. And we do this by way of a hosting view controller. So let's go to our storyboard and start here. First thing I'll do is click on the rating slider and the ratings label and delete them both. 
Next, I'm going to add a container view. I'll just drop it on and drag and align it to the location where I just replaced those two other controls. I'll delete that view controller that was created for that container view, and instead, I'm going to add a hosting view controller. To link up our container view to that hosting view controller, I can control drag from the container view to the hosting controller and choose embed. I'll select the segue and give it a unique identifier like to ratings view. I need to fix the constraints now, so I'll make sure that I center in the container view horizontally. And then I'll add a standard vertical spacing and I'll fix the width and height to those dimensions where I drew it. Next, I'll have both the edit view controller and the storyboard open together. I'm going to control drag the segue to the hosting controller from our storyboard onto the class to create an IB segue action function. And I'll give it a name like to ratings view. What gets returned is a UI hosting controller with two properties, a coder and a root view. For the coder, it's just the coder that is passed in. And for the root view, we'll specify our Swift UI view, which is our ratings view. And we'll just choose the default implementation for now. We have a problem though. What we want to pass in is not a binding, but the value of our book rating, if it exists, or zero if it's new. And we can't pass in a state object because there is no such thing as a state property because we're currently in UIKit. So we'll need to go back to our ratings view and we'll change that binding just to a local state variable to keep this current rating local and initialize it as zero. And instead, we'll create a new property to pass in from our view controller. So we'll call it passed in rating and it'll be an int. Now we'll have to fix our preview by passing in a default value. And then finally, when our view appears, we'll assign that passed in rating to our local state variable, the current rating, so that it can be updated from within this view. Back now in Edit View Controller, we have to remove all references to those two controls that we deleted, the rating slider and the rating, and make sure we remove the IV action as well. And for the update book function, let me just comment out this offending line here and this here. Well, we can now change the argument to our ratings view into a passed in rating. And that'll be the this book rating if it's not null, otherwise zero. Let's run and see how we're doing so far. If we tap on a row, we get to our edit view, and indeed we see that new ratings view displayed correctly, with the correct number of stars filled. And tapping on one will change the rating. However, when I tap on update, the rating's not reflected back in our list view. We still need to somehow convey back to the calling view that this rating has changed. Now there's a couple of ways to go about doing this. We could use a protocol and delicate pattern, but I prefer to use closures. With a closure, you can pass in a function from one view to another and then use the value from the second view as the argument for your function. So if we had a function in our edit view controller that has an integer parameter that is used to update the value of our rating on this book, 
we can pass that function into our Swift UI view and have it use the updated rating as the function's argument. So let's do that. In edit view, then, we'll create a new function called update rating that has an int as a parameter, and all it does is set the value of the rating for this book. If it's an update or if it's a new value, we're going to assign that rating to the new instance's rating. We'll call it update rating with one parameter that we'll call value, and it's an int. So if this book is not nil, meaning we're doing an update, well, we can unwrap it and set the rating to the value that we received. If it's not nil, we'll still need to hold on to that value until we decide that we want to create a new one. So I need to create one more property in the edit view controller. That's an int that we'll call new rating and we'll initialize it as zero. Then in the update ratings else clause, we can set this new rating to what we get as our new value. And then finally, we can remove this commented out line altogether here if this book is not nil. And then we'll just uncomment out this new book section, but we'll assign the new rating to the rating that we have here. Well, we're almost there. We'll need to pass this function into our Swift UI view. So let's return now to ratings view. And I'm going to create a new property that's called update rating. And it's a closure type that'll have an int as an argument and return void. And I'll create that right after our passed in rating property. Now I have a video on closures. So if this is confusing to you, I suggest you watch that video and I'll leave a link in the notes below. Now in our tap gesture, we can, where we update our current rating, pass that update to the update rating function. And we'll need to do that each time that we update that current rating. We'll also need to stop Xcode from complaining by updating our preview. So let's just create a static function called update rating that accepts a value as an int but does nothing. And then we'll use this just as a placeholder so that we can use it as the argument for our preview. Now this of course breaks our call in the edit view controller, so let's fix that. Since our argument type is looking for a function that has a single int parameter returning void, we can pass in that function that we created earlier just as its name the update rating function. So let's test this out. If we run in the simulator, let's tap on a book. And when we update the rating, we see that it gets updated in the list as well. Let's create a new book. How about Absolute Rage? And the author is Robert Tannenbaum. It's a thriller. And I'm going to give it a rating of 4 out of 5. When we exit our fields, the Create button is active. We can create it. And we can see if the object is created. It's showing up in our list view with the correct rating. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and can see a practical use if you have old UI kit projects that you want to maintain yet move forward in Swift UI. Thanks for watching.